Hi. Hi. Welcome back. Elizabeth Ashley here. And uh, yeah, the sun's hot. I might need a hat. You wait till you see the hat if I decide to get it out. It's quite spectacular. Far too over the top for the garden, but there we go. So anyway, um, I wanted to just have a quick talk to answer a lady's question about I know the difference between Rose Absolute and Rose Essential Oil, but I'm at a loss to know when to use each. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about that really. So just in case you don't know what's the difference between Rose Essential Oil and Rose Absolute, let's just uh, quickly talk about that. I just have to show you this. Beautiful, beautiful English roses. So this is my little miniature one. If you can see it, it's down in that corner. No smell, a bit rubbish from that point of view. And this, this is a bit special. This one's called Noble Anthony. And my dad ordered it just before he died to be given to me at his funeral. And he gave me a lovely little poem that said, basically, come and sit and share a beer with me. So whenever anything's good, I go and sit by his rose bush and I'm so excited to be able to show you his beautiful rose. Noble Anthony, it's David Austin rose, if you want a copy. The smell is unbelievable. Actually, the smell sitting here is fantastic because what I've done, very bad, really. But I have put some onto a piece of kitchen roll. Now, I don't know if you can see, this one here, rose absolute. This one here, rose on fleurage. This one here, Rose Otto or Rose Essential Oil. So, first thing you can see is they look different. So let's tell you what they are first of all. So Rose Otto or Rose Essential Oil is rose petals that have released their essential oil. I'm getting blinded by how bright this is. Release their uh, essential oil through distillation. Simple as. Um, in actual fact, that it goes through what's called a double distillation because unbelievably, the first time you distill it, all of the essential oil, or all of the, the fragrance, sorry, all of the fragrance stays in the water. So they have to do what's called something called cohibition. So they distill it again, which takes this component out and puts it into the essential oil, otherwise it would smell of nothing. So yeah, so that's the essential oil. The rose absolute is different. It's also rose petals, usually from the same kind of Rosa Damascena. Sometimes you can see it from Centifolia. They do get um, absolutes from different types of um, roses, just the same as they get essential oils. But usually the most popular is Rosa Damascena. And uh, it's extracted by hexane extraction. Now, when I went to Bulgaria, I saw this being done and I could not believe the size of the plant, that they, uh, the factory plant that they need to, to get Rosa Absoluta out. It's unbelievable. Um, huge. And what they do is they take the petals and they pour a constituent called hexane over, a chemical called um, hexane, and the hexane is absor uh, absorbs all the oil and then um, when it comes out, and this is very shortened because it's a massive, massive process, but when it comes out, it comes out as something called a concrete, which um, looks a bit like wax. It's like a wa uh, like a, a very dark orange wax. And actually, the guy gave me a tiny, tiny bit that they turned the tap off. It was they finished for the day, and there was a, a drip. And I'll put it in my handbag for safekeeping, and uh, I still smell it now in the in the handbag. It's beautiful. So um, you might see rose concrete, <clears throat> but then what happens is they wash it with alcohol and what's left behind is a rose absolute. Um, you might also see rose CO2, which is also an absolute, but it's been extracted by a process called um, a process with carbon dioxide. So when you and I were at school, we were taught things were solid, liquid and gas. So obviously distillation, they use gas, they use vapours to get it out. But um, actually, there is another um, state which is called hypercritical or supercritical, which is somewhere between um, liquid and gas. So what they do is they put the petals into um, a big chest, it's like a big square chest, and they put it under enormous pressure. 
and so um, they put this the carbon dioxide through a t hypercritical and then of course when they release the pressure all that happens is the gas leaves and so they're left with this absolute that's entirely pure now um normal rose absolute does have a trace of hexane left but um just it's very very tiny but the co2 absolute is far more pure and then the other one that we have on here that's slightly i don't know if you can see it's slightly orangey hmm, it's my favorite actually that's um rose entourage you don't see that very often anymore um you really have to i think do you know i think that might have come from india um so in the olden days um what the, how they used to extract the, the oil was to take the petals and to lay them on a great big rack, a rack um, and like a, um, cover it with vegetable oil and then they put it out in the sunshine and what would happen was is the uh, vegetable would leach the essential oils out and so they would take them back in, change the petals over and over and it was a very very labour intensive process make the most exquisite oil and, it, and I have to say it's the nicest rose oil I've got and I've nearly finished that bottle and I don't know what I'm going to do when it's gone but um, yeah so very very labour intensive hence you don't see it very much these days it is how they used to um, do the rose oil in grass in years gone by in Provence but um, well the French pay their, their staff very well don't they so it would become very expensive <laughs> to do it that way but you do still see it in um, uh, India and places like that but it's beautiful beautiful um, so yeah rose on florage so there's your different types and they do smell different which of course I can't smell now because I put more than one sheet but the rose when I smell the rose Otto yeah it smells like Bulgaria <laughs> all those uh, distilleries I went into it's um much softer lighter lemony kind of heady note whereas the absolute is um deeper a bit a bit more sexy if i'm honest this is a bit um it's got kind of an innocence to it whereas um the rose absolute is a bit a bit more raunchy but you know what the properties are the same um but I mean, I talk a lot in my books about vibration of, of essential oils. Don't come off. Don't, I thought the label was going to come the, the vibrations of essential oils. And this is something that you kind of do need to, uh, to learn to do. Is when, Like when you smell the oil, learn to discern it. It sounds really weird, but outside of your head. So you can feel how it hits the back of your nose. And where it hits in your head. But also you kind of notice it feel, it's here and, and you know what that's your aura you can feel it vibrating in your aura so that's there that vibrates there on me so that's the otto and this is the, the absolute that's way down there you can almost feel it in my throat and it's really hitting the heart chakra a lot lot stronger yeah so the two feel different so when you come to do, to blend something uh like a a facial cream or something it's about kind of smelling what's in your as you build the mix smell the mix and go what's missing and you'll be able to feel the mix here or wherever and you'll be able to think oh yeah i'm kind of missing the note that's got to be up there i, I remember i remember what's up there that's kind of a a jasmine note or a you know or a, or an entourage note and you'll you'll start to remember where it was it's a bit like oh i'm gonna train now we've got a per, we've got a private jet that's nice um how rude um so you get the you'll start to get a feeling for how different they feel so the properties are very similar from a scientific point of view if i were making a skincare cream I would always go for the absolute and the reason for that is because the scientific evidence shows that rose absolute uh, helps the uh, keratinocytes to to form so they're the very very lowest uh, uh, base level of skin cells so it encourages them to produce more now that doesn't mean that rose essential or the rose otto doesn't do that 
It's only that I haven't seen evidence of it, and the chances are that's because nobody's done the experiment. But to me, I would use, rather use the one that I've got proof of. The other thing is, well, it smells different. And so, God, what would that, I mean, that beautiful mix with like oranges and things like that, that's mixed on there. Well, let me do it, smell it out of there. That's your enfourage. Yeah, so what, what would have been that with sort of woody, woody smells, so cedar wood and sandalwood or spice notes. Yeah, it is kind of got a spicy note to it, so cinnamon, nutmeg, one of my favourite oils, cinnamon, nutmeg, orange. I can't think of a single sort of herby note that I'd want to put with that. So, you know, you can feel, feel it and smell it. But then if you smell your Otto, yeah, yeah, I would want to put florals with that, so lavender, marjoram, carry sage, um, I'm thinking oregano, but I can't think of a reason why I would put oregano in. I can't think of a mix that would warranty that. Geranium. More of that sort of bright sort of garden. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking of it, really. This is more gardens. This is more exotics. And actually, the the um, absolute is more exotic. So have a look what else is in your blend. And, and look what, what to put it with for that. <clears throat> the rose in itself has got lots of properties but you can kind of classify them as for the skin, for the hormones and for grief. It's very much heart chakra medicine, so anything to do with unhappiness really. But also, the heart chakra not only has emotional benefit, uh, qualities of course, but it actually um, joins the emotional elements of our psyche in our aura to our physical body. So corresponding with that you've got circulation you've got the actual heart itself but you've got the um, circulation so things like ischemia um, your heart chakra is also your lungs breathing although I can think of other better oils than rose full stop for breathing more bronchitis oils but you know if somebody's yeah you know, I mean at the moment our family's suffering we we have a, a dear friend who is has had a car accident and uh, yeah she's still in a coma so um, I recognize this I've, I've, I feel so sad I can't breathe properly you know I feel myself cat, catching my breath and so for that that's not that you don't want a, a breathing oil for that do you that that's that's sadness heart, that's heart so that's rose that's a rose medicine and and so do we use absolute? Do we do we use uh, otter? Well, it really depends on what else you're putting with it. Really, simple as. Think about how your oils work. The different ones that you choose. What you're using it for. <clears throat> so, let's think if it. Uh, uh, let's think it out. If I were to do an oil for me for. for oh, hello. For a heart problem right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've upset myself. Um. So I'd probably put bergamot with it to lift the emotions and probably spikenard because it is long. This is a long wait. It's been two weeks. She's been in a coma now. So yeah, so, so both of those are kind of uh, exotic, aren't they? So then that's more of an absolute, yeah? Um, and there's nothing really about the lungs there. There's nothing to say bronchitis or anything like that. Um, it's the medicine. It's the the emotional side. And so we seeing what else we'd put it with it, and then matching it to that. So let me think of something else. Um, okay. So what about if if I were a person who was very upset? because my husband had run off with another woman because we hadn't been able to have sex. So that's, well, first of all, we didn't eat him in the, 
but so we're, we're we're thinking about the grief but we're also thinking about the aphrodisiac dimension because i'm cheating really just so that it makes it easier for me to to pick oils but um so they're going to be exotics like sandalwood or jasmine or cedarwood or or maybe clar yeah yes yeah though so yeah exotics aphrodisiac exotics so mix those again with the absolute what about if somebody is yeah somebody can't sleep somebody can't sleep because they're grieving yeah so um to help them sleep we would go lavender and marjoram for the central nervous system and rose and so in that case because they're more herby ones they're gonna fit better with the otto in my opinion and that is i mean that is a factor as well this is all about your opinion because it's your healing you don't have to emulate mine you might be able to see a whole different dimension to me and your energy is almost as strong as you know as an essential oil once you're charging that that energy in there your energy goes in as well as the plants energy so that might change the mix as well so don't take my blending for gospel because i don't think i'm actually that good at blending good enough but um my my experience is more uh research you know that the full of rubbish up here you know uh, that's my stuff there's people who can help you to blend better but that that is the way that i would discern it so um i don't know if actually i mean look at my, i just they lovely they lovely you know um but neither of these actually looks like the uh, rose that rose oil comes from. It's much more delicate. It's kind of somewhere between that pink, somewhere between the two, much more delicate. This one is more like the rose centifolia that they use in Ayurvedic medicine, which incidentally, oh, it's exquisite, absolutely exquisite, or even more so the Tafe rose that they have from, from um, by Mecca oh my goodness me that's beautiful and um you know what they wash the walls of the temple in mecca of it um to cleanse away the negativity but also in praise of uh, praise of allah ah, just would love to go and smell it not a place for an infidel though is it but yeah beautiful so there we go a little bit of insight into rose oil for you if you're trying to choose between rose um essential oil and also or rose otto or rose Ab absolute and you can't decide which bottle to choose if it were me i'd buy the absolute so there we go i hope that's been helpful to you and uh yeah i will see you again soon